Okay, you've got an Echo Map and you're very, very interested in live sonar technology. So you're looking at the Garmin Panoptics technology and you're wondering what the heck you're looking at because there is all kinds of transducers, all kinds of compatibility concerns, and you have no idea what works with what. It's, it's a mess. Well, guys, this is the video for you because today we're going to talk about all things panoptics and compatibility with Garmin Echo Map. So tune in and we're going to break everything down for you today. Fair warning in advance, we have a ton of information to go through, okay? I've put together all kinds of pictures and little video clips and stuff, so there's a lot to talk about today. So, I will have chapters in the timeline below, so if you want to skip to a certain kind of panoptics or a certain section of the video uh, to get the information you're looking for, then please go ahead and do it. But yeah, we're going to go through everything today. Every generation of panoptics and every generation of Echo Map, okay? So, all I ask for in return, guys, as always, for putting these videos together is please go ahead and hit the like button if you found this useful or entertaining or educational. And of course, make sure you're subscribed, bell notification, blah, 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 all that good stuff. It really helps me grow the channel. And as you guys know, the channel has been exploding. So thank you. Now, we got a lot to go through, so let's dive right into it. Okay, so we all know that live sonar is taking over the industry. If you don't know what live sonar is, it looks like this. And it looks like this. And basically it gives you a real time look at what the fish are doing as long as it's within the cone angle of the transducer that you're using. So this is crazy, crazy stuff. Garmin's got the live scope as well as the original Panoptics that's been around since uh, a couple of years now. And we've got Lowrance that recently came out with their active target. And we also have Mega Live coming out from Humminbird at some point. So this is a big deal. It's basically changing the industry, changing fishing and it's really starting to become more achievable and more in a price range that people can afford, even though it is still pretty expensive. So more and more people are looking into this, more and more people are talking about it. So I'm shopping around for stuff that works with the Echo Map, but I noticed that there's just a ton of misinformation and confusion. So let's talk about the very first version of Panoptics. Now the very first version of Panoptics is not like the Panoptics live scope that you see these days. In fact, it looks like this right here. The original Panoptics technology worked with the Echo Map Chirp units, as well as the Plus units. It also works with the UHD, and it also works with the Ultras. So this is the first generation where you didn't have that really amazing imagery that you see now with Live Target. You more or less have these colored blobs that move around. There's also a 3D technology that's available with this type of transducer, and you basically have the forward facing and downward facing, but you didn't have it built into one transducer. You actually had to turn the transducer around. So the transducers in Panoptics are these variety here that you can see on the screen. So everything started off with the Pan Optics PS21. So this is the very first one, the 21 series that connected to the trolling motor or to the trolling motor shaft. Now all of these are discontinued now, they don't exist anymore. Uh, so now it's the PS22. Now the PS22 is actually this guy here, so you can see that it can be barrel mounted on the trolling motor or shaft mounted. And here you can see the positions, the down position that you can rotate it, or you can click it into the forward facing position. But you don't really get both at the same time. So that is the older style of transducer and it's the older style technology of Panoptics, not the same as Panoptics LiveScope. After that, you've got the PS30, you've got the PS31 and the PS60. So the PS60 is pretty much the same thing as the PS30, but it is through hull. So this means that you connect it to the bottom of your fiberglass boat. It doesn't need to be on the outside of the boat in the water. So kind of an important difference and that's why it's so expensive. Now here's a look at the actual product page for the PS22. So you can see that the PS22 is currently retailing for $1349.99 US. Um, um, and what's important to look down is at the specs that it is a 120 degree by 20 degree angle on the cone. So that means if this is if the boat's facing this way, it covers 120 degrees, but it only is 20 degrees wide that way. Okay, so that's what those measurements mean. So you get a quite a wide beam angle, uh, and you get the narrow beam. So you really do have to aim it exactly where you want it to be. But you get a lot of room, so you can see what's out in front of the boat, and also kind of directly in front below the boat, if that makes any sense. Here you can actually get a real look at what the panoptics looks like, as well as the angle that you're getting in the coverage, because you can see the point where the boat is actually located as well as how far it'll go out and you have a range of up to 300 feet
feet down and 300 feet forward. So this will work with all Echo Maps, okay? So every Echo Map except for the first generation. So it works with Chirp, UHD Plus, and Ultra. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about Panoptics Live Scope. So this is the one that you guys are all seeing where you, in the demo videos, you can kind of even see the individual details of each fish. You can tell what species it is. This is big time. This is pretty much the best in the business, okay? And this is what it looks like here. And LiveScope, of course, is pretty much number one in the industry. It is what all the pros are using, more or less. It is just a huge, huge jump in technology that is giving a crazy advantage to anglers out there. So there are two different things you need to be aware of. There's a lot of jumping around in the compatibility and what works, as well as cone angle. So you might have wondered, why is there a transducer or a LiveScope setup that costs $1,500, $2,000, and why is there one that costs five or six hundred dollars? Like it's crazy, it seems like such a huge price difference. Well, there's a really good reason for that. So the first transducer that's available, the main one that everybody pretty much gets, is the LVS32. And this is what it looks like right here. And you can see this comes with a black box. This is like the black converter box that converts the signal from the transducer and translate it into data that the echo map can then display on the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up the LVS32 live scope system, okay? And you can see here that it includes both the LVS32 transducer, which is that triangle looking thing, and it includes the black box, the GLS10, which is the converter box. And this actually retails for $1,500 US for the whole kit. Now you can also buy just the LVS32 transducer, but you actually need the black box, and we'll get more into that afterwards, okay? So if we look at the specs, what's important to note is that the beam angle on this is 135 degrees by 20 degrees. So it does, once again, if we're in the boat, and we're facing forward, it's gonna do basically the top of the water, 135 degrees, so you're gonna get the whole front of the boat and a little bit under the boat, and the cone angle facing forward, uh, you know, horizontally is gonna be 20 degrees. So that's important to note, you get that great, great coverage, okay? And again, you can change the angle on it, and there's some other accessories we're gonna talk about, but that's what's important to note on the price, okay? So you get that large angle, and you also get the black box. Next up, we have the LVS-12. So the LVS-12 is significantly cheaper, so it attracts a lot of first-time buyers because it retails for a lot less. So this is actually what it looks like. Again, it has that triangular shape, and you can see here that it is both barrel-mounted as well as shaft-mounted on the trolling motor. Now, let's go ahead and load up the product page, and you can see on the product page that it is significantly cheaper, coming in at $500 US. And on top of that, you don't need the GLS-10 black box converter. It's not needed for this particular transducer. But there's a couple of things you need to know. The first big thing is the fact that the cone angle is totally different on this. So where the LVS32, you get the full 135 degrees coverage in front of the boat at 20 degrees horizontally. This guy here only does 30 degrees forward and 30 degrees down view. It doesn't do the full 135. So you have 30 degrees here, 30 degrees down. So you can see what's in front of the boat, you can see what's below the boat, but you don't really get anything that's in between. I'm gonna show you some footage right now and you can see it for yourself. So playing on the screen, that shows you the down view as well as the forward facing view. So you cannot put both together on the same screen. Now you can divide your screen to show both views at the same time. So much like when you're using your sonar and you're using a combination menu, you can have like one showing the map and one showing your sonar. Well with here you can have one side that's showing the front view and the other side that's showing the down view. But you can't combine it into one big image. Whereas with the LVS32, you get the full view all on one nice big screen. So it doesn't get all broken up. The other thing is the LVS12 doesn't come with a black box, and that's because it only works with one kind of echo map. It only works with the Ultra. So you can actually take the LVS-12 and plug it directly into an echo map Ultra port, and that's it. You don't need the black box, but it only works with the Ultra. So you cannot take it, even though it's the same connector, you cannot connect it into an echo map UHD or a plus unit, and have it work. It will not work, you will get no image, it's just simply incompatible. So remember guys, the cheaper version only works with the ultras, but then you have the reduced cone angles that you gotta deal with, okay? So bear that in mind. So now let's go back to the LVS32. What is that compatible with? So that will work with the Plus, the UHD, or the Ultra. It does not work with Chirp, okay? And for all units, it doesn't matter if it's the Ultra, the UHD, or the Plus, you also need the black box. So. Just because the Ultra works without the black box for the LVS-12, you need the black box for the LVS-32. 
all units require, even the GPS map series of Garmin chart plotters, they all need that black box, okay? So if you're buying the LVS32, do not buy just the transducer. You will also need the GLS10 box, okay? So bear that in mind. Okay, now one more thing that we wanna talk about here is a mounting bracket for what's called the perspective view or perspective mode, okay? So I'm gonna show you on the screen some video footage of what this looks like. And basically this allows you to scan what's in front of the boat, almost like Mega 360. So it's kind of giving you a bird's eye view of what's going on around your boat, 135 degrees in front of you, wherever you've got the trolling motor pointed. Now, for those of you that have compared or have used the Humminbird 360, which I absolutely love, you can actually see that the image here isn't as clear. It's not as crisp as, a, as the Mega 360, but because it's real time and you can see things moving around, it just pops out so much more. Now, the perspective requires an actual special mount. So this is a mount, it's the perspective adapter, perspective mode adapter, that allows you to switch it and click to, from having the transducer into this position, it actually moves it into this position. So it's no longer scanning this way, it's actually scanning out in front of the boat that way. So instead of getting that 20 degrees coverage, you're getting 20 degrees this way, but you're getting 135 that way. So it's an amazing technology. This again only works with the LVS 32 transducer. You cannot use this with the LVS 12. And this is just a little graphic that I found right here. You can see this on the screen. Uh, and this just shows you the difference between the 135 degrees that you get with the LVS 32 versus the 30 degrees that you get with the LVS 12. In my opinion, if you get the budget, you might as well go for the 32, go all the way. You'll get the full coverage. You won't have to fiddle around trying to find fish as much. Next up, let's talk about where the cable actually connects. So when you've got your pan optics cable setup, it is an RJ45 connector, meaning a network connector. And on the back of your unit, there's a round little rubber grommet on there that pops off, little rubber protector. And under there is an RJ45 connector like this guy right here. So on the older units, okay, so on your Chirp and on your Gen 1s, they used to network together via, I think it was like a brown and green wire, I can't remember the colors, but you used to just tie those wires together that were part of the power cord and that would network your units for data sharing. On the newer units, the Plus, the UHD and the Ultras, they actually use networking cables. Even though the power wire does come with those extra wires, they don't do anything when you connect them. You need to use networking cables. The problem is, on these units, there's only one network port, and it's either a network cable or your Panoptics live scope. So unfortunately, if you have two units together, you're gonna have to unplug one of these and sacrifice it for your Panoptics, and you're gonna need to get yourself the GMS-10 network hub, okay? So it's a network hub, network switch. I'll pop it up on the screen here. You'll actually need to purchase this to run your network. So you'll need to run all of your units through here as well as plug in your transducer to this. And that's the only way that you'll be able to go ahead and have the Panoptics on your system as well as network your units together. But the advantage with this is you'll actually then be able to share that Panoptics live scope on on any unit that's in your network. So that is kind of cool. Now, one benefit of picking up the Ultra unit is that it comes with two network ports. So you do not need to worry about networking if you've got Ultras, because Ultras all have dual. So you can actually have the pan optics in one and then the network cable in the other. And still that will allow you to share your pan optics on any of the Ultras that are in the boat. If you've made it this far in the video, congrats guys. You have pretty much learned everything there is to know about pan optics and compatibility with your Echo Maps. And here on the screen, I'm just gonna show you guys a quick little summary of what we've discussed. So here you can see all of the different pan optics style. Okay, so we've got the pan optics all seeing sonar. That's the first gen that we talked about. Then you have pan optics live scope. And then you've got the LVS-12, which does not need the black box converter. So you can see here that the pan optics, the original version, the all seeing sonar, they called it at the time, works on every single generation of the Echo Map except for the Gen 1. So Chirp Plus Ultra UHD all works. You can see that the pan optics live scope with the LVS-32 and the black box works on the UHD, the Ultra and the Plus. And then finally, you have the Panoptics Live Scope LVS-12, which only works on the Ultra Series with no black box. And remember that the LVS-32 requires the black box on any Garmin unit, including the Ultras. Guys, I told you this video was gonna be a doozy. We had a ton of information to pack into a very small video. So I hope after all of this, it's very clear which Panoptic systems work with which Echo Maps, what they look like and all that good stuff. I really hope you found this super, super useful. If you don't mind guys, of course, if this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, help me grow the channel. Uh, even though it's expanding amazingly, I just still wanna keep that momentum going. So thank you so much. And of course, make sure you're subscribed for more 
great videos. I've got a lot of good stuff coming up. We actually have a tournament coming up um, in two weeks. I'm going to be participating in my first ever competitive online tournament thing. It's actually for Pike, not Bass, though. Uh, I've got, I still got a build I want to do. I've got a piece of furniture that I want to build, except that wood costs an insane amount of money, so that's why I haven't done it yet. Uh, and we got more to go, guys. I hope Really hope that you found this super helpful, guys. As always, comments below. Let me know what you think. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.